Hello, welcome to this new tutorial dedicated to Adobe Photoshop, one of the best products you can use to correct and manipulate photos and work with vector drawings. In this video, we are going to see Adobe Photoshop CC, which is part of the Creative Cloud subscription for both Windows and Mac OS. When you open Photoshop, its home screen shows up with a list of your most recent projects made. On the left, click on Open to browse for another. Or go to New File to create a new Photoshop document. In this case, choose the proper document properties by selecting the category on top and the specific template you need. On the right, set document name, its width and height, its orientation, color code, and default color to use for the background. As you click on Create, the new document opens on the main interface. This shows a big preview on the center, the Tools bar on the left, the Options bar on the top, with all the Objects and Tools options, and several panels on the right we are going to see. In case any panel is missing, you can reopen it from the Window tab. To come back to the Home screen page, click on the Home button in the top left corner. To open any image, go to File, Open, and browse for it. This gets opened as an independent Photoshop document under a new tab. To understand how to use Photoshop, it is important to know what is a Photoshop document. This is a project file made by several objects that, put together, realize what you see on the preview. These objects are called layers, listed under the Layers panel on the right, and can be images, vector drawings, and adjustments. A new document shows a single layer called Background completely white in color. The same is present when you open an image, with the difference that this layer represents the entire photo. These background layers are locked by default. You can unlock these by double-clicking on these. To resize the document, you can enable the Crop tool and use the nodes to scale the grid and drag from outside to rotate it. You can also click and drag the grid to move it, leaving outside what you want to cut. To crop with specific resolutions, you can type width and height and pixels on the Options bar above. Click on Cancel or Commit to undo the crop or apply it. Any checkerboard area you see on the preview represents area without pixels, so complete transparency. Let's see how to edit images. These are pixel layers, such as objects rendered in pixels that can be edited and corrected with the brushing tools on the left. Just select the interested layer, enable the brushing tool, and click and drag on the preview. And right-click on the tool to show others related. If you do not find any tool, right-click on the three dots and go to Edit Toolbar to show the tool you are looking for. To check better the preview, you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel while holding down the Alt or the Option key. Use the Spacebar key to pan around instead. Now, let's see the main brushing tools. Enable the Brush or the Pencil tool to brush freehand selecting the right color from the color panel on the right. You can also pick any color from the screen if you hold the Alt or the Option key. Remember to use Control or Command and Z to undo, or open the History to undo several actions all at once. From the Option bar above, adjust the brush direction, size, Hardness, or select any ready preset at the bottom. Enable the Clone Stamp and the Healing Brush tools to correct photo imperfections. Fix the reference point by clicking on the image while holding down the Alt or the Option key. When you brush on the image, the tool pastes the pixels under the reference cross that follows your cursor. Clone Stamp pastes the same pixels. The healing brush drops pixels by taking into account the original colors of the image. Switch to Spot Healing Brush to correct smaller imperfections by clicking once on the preview. 
With the blur and the sharpen tools, you can increase or reduce blurriness by brushing on the image. Whereas use the smudge tool to drag pixels as you brush. Enable the dodge and the burn tools to increase or decrease the brightness level for the different sections of the image you can select on top. Such as highlights, midtones, or shadows. Switch to Sponge to adjust the color intensity, reducing it with Desaturate mode and increasing it with Saturate mode. With the Eraser tool, you can remove pixels from the image, as you can see from the checkerboard area. To apply advanced corrections on the entire image, you can go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and select between loads of corrections to apply. Also go to Neural Filters. To apply outstanding photo manipulations, we won't see these in this beginner tutorial. With Photoshop, you can also work with vector layers to make drawings, geometrical shapes, and text annotations. In respect to images, these are defined by math algorithms instead of pixels, so they never lose quality when modified. On the left, enable any Shape tool to drop straight lines and geometrical shapes by clicking and dragging on the preview. From the option bar, adjust line thickness, line style, fill color, and stroke color. From the properties panel on the right, adjust size, position, and inclination as needed. Enable the custom shape tool to drop any ready-made shapes selected from the option bar above. To drop text, you can enable the horizontal or the vertical type tool and click and drag on the preview to drop a text box and type inside, horizontally or vertically. If you are not able to see the entire text, make sure to enlarge its box enough. From the option bar, adjust font family, style, size, distribution, and color. You can also open the Character panel to set text leading, tracking, baseline, and much more. If you do not see any change, select any piece of the text first. Use Cancel or Commit to undo or apply text. The brushing tools seen before do not work on vectors unless you transform these into pixel layers. To do so, click on OK on the dialog box or right-click on the vector and go to Rasterize. Pay attention that this action is permanent, so you may not be able to edit vectors like before anymore. On the right, you can use the Layers panel to manage each single object inside your document, hide or show any layer with the I button, prevent any modification with the Lock button, and delete the selected layer with the Bend button at the bottom. Move any layer up or down to change the order of visibility in case the selected layer is overlapped. You can also right-click on any layer and go to Blending Options to apply nice effects, including stroke contours, shadows, glow, and color overlays. To apply basic modifications on the selected layer, go to Edit Transform. This allows you to move, scale, rotate, and skew the object from the preview. Use Commit above to apply. To make precise corrections, you may use the Adjustments panel on the right. You can correct brightness, contrast, color, and much more by creating an adjustment layer, affecting all the pixel and vector layers below it in the Layers list. This object is composed by the adjustment properties on the left and the layer mask on the right. If you double-click on the properties, you can tune the corrections while checking the preview. If you double-click on the right, you manage the layer mask, which is a white area that shows where the adjustment is applied, by default on the entire document. To apply adjustments on limited regions, you need to use the selection tools. With the selection tools, you can select specific regions of the document in order to act only within such dashed contour. 
For example, any brushing tool will be effective only within such region. If you apply any adjustment layer, this is applied only on such region, as it is shown on the layer mask as well. You can also cut, copy, and paste the selected region with Control or Command and X, C, V. You can use this cut-paste operation to paste multiple images within the same document, each treated as an independent layer. There are several selection tools available. Use the Marquee tool to select wide regions following a rectangular or elliptical shape by clicking and dragging on the preview. Choose the Lasso tools to select regions freehand, polygonal, or with some help with magnetic. With the Object Selection tool, you can click on the preview to automatically select entire shapes from the layer. Whereas with Quick Selection, you can select by brushing on the preview. Use the Type Mask tool to select by following any piece of text you type. Remember that all these selections are always referred to the selected layer from the right. To remove any selection, use Control or Command and D. To save your Photoshop document, go to File and then to Save As. Select whether to save it online on Adobe Cloud as PSDC or in your computer offline as a PSD file format. When your document is ready and you want to render and export it, go to File, Save a Copy. Select between loads of different formats, including PDF document, JPG image, and also PNG if you want to save transparency. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure to check our channel and visit our official website for more tips, free tutorials, and giveaways right away.